Let's continue our unit on data and statistics by comparing populations. Students were asked how many siblings they each had, and here is the data from three classrooms. We have Miss C, Miss T, and Mr. R. We're going to first take the data from Miss C's class and plot it on a dot plot. You can use an X or a circle dot, whichever is more convenient for you. Just make sure you don't forget any data points. After our dot plot is complete, we're going to find the mean, or the average. Remember, there's two steps to finding the mean. First, we find the total of all of the data. So we add everything up here and get 60. Next, we have to divide by how many people were surveyed. In this case, there were 20 total students asked. So 60 divided by 20 gives us a mean of 3. Next, we're going to find the range. Let's remember that the range is the difference. We're looking at the largest data point and the smallest data point. In this case, we're going from 0 to 8, so it gives us a range of 8. Next, we're going to do the same for Miss T's class. We're going to plot each one of the points into the dot plot. After we complete the dot plot, we're going to find the mean or the average. Remember, total up all of that data. In this case, we get a total of 40. Then count each one of the data pieces or the students that were asked. There were 20. So 40 divided by 20 gives us a mean of 2. Next, let's find the range for this data. The largest data point is 8. The smallest data point is 0, so we have a range of 8. Last but not least, let's do the same for Mr. R's class. Plot each one of the points. Then let's find the mean, totaling up all the data. We get a kind of large total this time, you'll notice. 120. Again, count how many students were surveyed giving us a grand total of 20. We divide, and in this case, we get a mean of 6. Let's also find the range of the data. The largest data point here was 12, and the smallest was 0. So in Mr. R's class, we have a range of 12. We can go ahead and look at the outliers real quick. You'll see in Ms. C's class, these two students are over here, and in Ms. T's class, it's one student over to the right. And even in Mr. R's class, you've got two students that are kind of over to the left. None of these are extreme outliers, but they do lie away from the cluster of data, where the majority of the class lies. Now we're going to fill in all the data we found, the mean and the range, for each one of the classrooms into a table so that we can compare each of the classes to each other. Here's everything that we found earlier. And we can actually look at this and infer that Mr. R's class has the largest mean and range. And there's some variability there with a range of 12 and a mean of 6. Now let's compare populations using box plots. Same data. Just want to walk us through how this works. Remember, the first thing you have to find is the median. And the median is the middle number. Well, in this case, there's two numbers in the middle, a 2 and a 3. So what's between 2 and 3? 2.5. That's our median. Now we look at the lower set of data and find the median here. In this case, it is 1. Look at the upper set of data. Let's find the median here. Well, it falls between 4 and 5. It's 4.5. Each one of these are plotted, including finding the minimum, which was 0, and the maximum, that is 8. Let's do the same thing for the other classes. Here we go, finding the median. Again, I will remember remind you that the median is the middle number. It's the number in the middle. We have a 2 and a 2, so that gives us 2. That's kind of easy. Now let's look at the lower set. In the middle, we have a 0 and a 0, so it gives us 0. And let's look at the upper set. We have 3. Plotting each point. In this case, you're going to notice that the minimum and Q1 are the same. They both are 0, but the maximum is 8. Last but not least, we're going to look at Mr. R's class and we're going to do the same thing. Now, we look at the three pieces of data, the median, the median, the median, for each class, and we have 2.5, 2, and 6. 
We're going to find the range for each one of them, which we did on the, on the dot plot, but this is for the box plot. We can look at the same thing. We go from minimum to maximum, minimum to maximum, minimum to maximum. We get 8, 8, and 12. And we can fill that data into the table as well. And then we're going to find the IQR. We need to remember that IQR means inner quartile range. So we're only looking where the box is. We're finding the range inside the box. You notice here, looking just at the box, it goes from 0 to 4.5. I'm sorry, it goes from 3 to 4.5. So that is 3.5. From 0 to 3 is 3. And here, from 3.5 to 8.5, we get an IQR of 5. So we can fill that data in as well. We get 3.5, 3, and 5. So what can we infer here? Well, the data shows that Miss T's class has the lowest average of siblings. See, everything's shifted to the left. And Mr. R's class has the highest. Things are shifted more to the right. Where Miss C's class is kind of in between. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to follow.